let's take you on a time jump virtual zoom bringing it back to theodore's bedroom these hands are passionately polysyllabic putting the jeopardy theme on swings ten dons giving predictions balancing vibes like the sons and daughters of ipwan ear to the under i want ear to the underground flicking off peppermint fresh experiment let's go el premier elemento you gotta take your time press your fingers to the line red man focus your mind and once you do that you're at the front of the combine Welcome to our final street art summer lesson of this summer. Uh, again, my name is Max Gibbons. Thank you so much for attending these four workshops. Uh, excited to spend the next hour with you and go over some of the things that we've learned so far in these trainings, some new content, and then also expose you to a couple awesome artists and ways that you can continue to make your stickers even better. Um, all right, so we're just gonna jump into it once again. If you have any questions for me while I'm presenting, please feel free to use that chat. Love interacting with all the uh, people attending. And if you're watching this at some point in the future, I encourage you to always uh, sign up for our student art classes, uh, where Speeds and Life will be continuing our uh, curriculum in the fall. Uh, so you can always join my classes, other art classes, whether that's visual arts or um, uh, graffiti art or the art of protest, wherever that might be. Uh, and then there's also, um, you know, obviously our classes in breaking, emceeing, b-boying, DJing, poetry, chess, uh, business and music, you name it. Uh, again, if you've created any artwork from these lessons or from my instruction, you can see on the ticker on the bottom, you can email your work to that email address there. It's work at wblinc.org. We'd love to see some of the awesome art and stickers that you've all created. We can also highlight that, really uh, help make your work shine. Um, all right, the images on here, uh, once again, uh, you know, it's two very, different styles of stickers. Uh, one is a piece drawn on the sticker on the left-hand side by the artist Coop. Um, and I might change mics uh, if, if you're having some trouble uh, hearing. Just give me one second. Let's see if this is better. There might be an echo. Um, all right, so, uh, and on the, on the right hand side is one of the eggshell stickers that we were talking about. You can see how people have tried to peel it away, but it stayed uh, on uh, the surface that it was applied to, and this is a very stylized tag going down uh, here. All right, so as I mentioned, today's goals will be kind of reviewing some of the content that you, you have learned uh, in these uh, three and now four sessions. Um, really focusing on why it's important for you as an artist to find your style and then continue to repeat that style and evolve and, and maintain it. And then obviously focus on why this is a street art class, um, the point of creating and producing and displaying artwork on the streets. Uh, so again, what have we learned? We have learned that street art is the form of public artwork. It's displayed in the public. It can be pasted or posted somewhere, it can be scrawled or spray painted on a wall, it can be installed, uh, you know, whatever medium or, or me method or message that you want to put out to the streets. Um, often moving slightly away from the letter-based form of graffiti, uh, often name-based, uh, letter-based, but street art can still involve those elements. You know, both art forms can take and borrow uh, different styles from each other. And again, stickers are an incredible way for both graffiti art and street artists to put their message out there, whether it's a silkscreen image onto a sticker, a handwritten poem, a tag that would usually be done with spray paint or marker on a wall onto a sticker and then, you know, uh, placed somewhere else. So stickers are our medium uh, for this, this uh, session. Uh, and I love, love that someone in the comments is saying, I love the term guerrilla art, right? Yeah, exactly. You're putting artwork out in the public. Um, um, I've had this conversation a lot with artists, friends of mine, that say, you know, you took so long to make that thing and then you gave it away to the streets. Uh, you have, you know, no monetary incentive to do that. Uh, you're giving it away for free. Uh, but that's kind of the part of it, right? All street art and graffiti is ephemeral. It goes away, it's temporary. And you're having that relationship 
connected to the people who are then viewing your artwork on the street, you know, outside of your room, outside of the studio, whatever that might be. So again, uh, you know, going to go over some of the terms that you've learned. Again, a tag is that stylized signature. You'll see them often on stickers like these displayed on the left. A throw or a throw up is that bubble lettering you might see some graffiti writers do. And if they fill it in with one color and outline it with another, that's called a fill in. And then a piece is a masterpiece, right? It's the complicated, takes a very long time. Some people call them burners because they you know, are just so incredible. Um, you know, it's, it's time uh, consuming, it's complicated. And when people are doing them on stickers, they have all the time in the world to really you know, do that. But uh, if you see that on a wall, you can see how long it really took that artist to produce their artwork uh, with you know, oftentimes if they didn't have permission, the threat of being caught or you know, getting in trouble. Again, uh, bombing is the action of getting your name or your artwork out very quickly. Um, so people call putting up lots of stickers on a surface sticker bombing. Uh, you know, a writer is someone who considers himself a person who's creating graffiti on the streets. They're a graffiti writer. Uh, that's different than some folks that call themselves graffiti artists. There is often a divide there. It really comes down to the nomenclature and personal identification of the artist but a writer would consider themselves to be doing graffiti. Uh, graffiti artists often uh, use graffiti inspired techniques to create legal artworks. So there is sometimes uh, some, some definitions there. Uh, a crew is a group of artists all working together. This could be a group of graffiti writers, graffiti artists, street artists. There are sticker crews where people collaborate with one another and send their stickers around and all collaborate on different stickers and then put them up in different cities. Um, straight letters for graffiti uh, terms are very easy to read, often done with uh, bucket paint and really, really big. But then again, you can also make them out of stickers. I've seen people do straight letters where they'll use one sticker per letter in giant font to spell out their name or spell out their street art name. Um, and then our purpose of this lesson on these, these four classes are, are specifically on slaps. So these are stickers adhesive labels, whatever you want to call them, uh, maybe vinyl adhesive that's left over from, you know, something, uh, you know, at a, at a print shop, um, anything that could be drawn on or written on and then adhered to a wall. So that is uh, what we're going over in these lessons. Now, uh, again, one of the most commonly available stickers that people will use, and you can see this on your screen in two different areas, one on the shared camera and another on the screen are these priority mail postal labels. Again, the US uh, Postal Service does not recommend that people use these for anything other than mailing uh, priority mail. But over the past, oh my gosh, almost 30 years since these have been around, uh, graffiti writers have repurposed them as mini adhesive canvases where they could put their artwork out on the streets. Uh, they have large open spaces, the stickiness of the label uh, makes them very um, usable for graffiti writers, and obviously they're free, which is also very good for, uh, you know, often uh, people who are, you know, doing graffiti and not wanting to spend the money on supplies necessarily, or if they can get it from their local post office. Um, so the purpose of today, and there's a couple more examples of these postal labels, is repetition. So if you think about a famous artist, uh, one that you uh, might might know, um, or one that you've seen a lot of their artwork. Um, you could see a painting of theirs, you'd see a piece of theirs, and you would recognize it instantly. This could be a Picasso, this could be a Van Gogh, this could be a Basquiat. It's the same for very uh, accomplished or experienced graffiti and street artists. Uh, you know, they've taken years to hone their craft. They've come up with characters or style or letter forms that are extremely distinct to them. And that's something that I encourage all of my students to do is really explore your own personal style and uh, not necessarily bite or rip off another artist, but you can take inspiration, that's important. So the artist that I'm showing you on the screen right now is Posh. Uh, they're from Southern California. They're a, a graffiti writer, occasional street artist, uh, who has literally created their own universe of letters and characters, and uh, you know, has, has helped form some of the US's uh, most esteemed graffiti crews. Um, what I wanna show you here on the left-hand side is that Posh draws these robot armies, very inspired by you know war vehicles that look outlandish, uh, and robots, and also ants. So kind of similar motif between you know a soldier marching and an ant marching, let's say. 
uh, but they're all mechanical and they're all, uh, you know, off to war for his graffiti, literally defending it, if you will. Um, so this on the left is one sticker. You can see there's a little robot, it looks like, driving this awesome, you know, tank with these two wheels. And on the right-hand side, you can see just the repetition of all these hand-done and drawn labels just over and over again, drawing this image of this, you know, robot essentially in this tank ready to march off as if each one of these stickers is a little soldier in Posh's army. Um, these robots are, you know, also replicated at a larger level. So I wanted to show you this. Um, you can see that same robot with the with the head here on the left hand side who's manning this machine gun in this kind of insectoid robot. And there's another one over here with that stylized helmet on the right hand side with the word bubble coming out uh, saying the graffiti writer's name here. Um, so, you know, this is an artist, once again, the repetition, right? You see this black and white image of a tank, or you see this black and white image of this you know, war machine that looks kind of like a bug, uh, and you know instantly that that is the artist posh. You can tell uh, that they've got that style, they've got that character, it's very specific to them. Uh, again, you know, here's two other examples. We're getting away from stickers a little bit now, but that's to show you that even if it's on a sticker or on the side of a wall or on the side of a freight train going by at 80 miles per hour, if you see this, you know, usually black and white, uh, you know, image of a soldier or these really stylized war machines, um, and, and I'm looking at Andy, I wonder how the Postal Service feels about the, the use of the stickers now over all these years. You know what? I'm not sure if anyone has actually asked the Postal Service. There has been a few books, like the uh, Martha Cooper book that I showed on one of the earlier classes, uh, Going Postal. But one of my uh, actually projects right now is to try to get in touch with someone at the US Postal Museum in Washington, DC, and ask them about the uh, influence of, uh, if they know about their influence on graffiti culture through providing these uh, free labels. But anyway, I digress. But thank you, that was a wonderful question. And if I ever do find out, I will let you know. Um, so these robots are, you know, the most painted thing that Posh does. Um, they don't have names. Sometimes they'll have numbers, but you can really see that, you know, it's, it's repeated. You know the artist when you see them. Uh, he has a quote to me, I'm a broken robot or a stray ant that won't follow the rules in my graffiti. Uh, the act of painting shows that I'm not really following the program. And no, I've never given names to any of these, you know, characters. I just give them numbers, but they're all just robots. I do the robots and the ants because of what they represent to me. So I think that's really cool, that personal artist statement and relationship with the character that means so much to them, that they're spending their time and money and effort to go and put this artwork out publicly and a piece of their self, you know, out into the streets. Um, again, this is an artist who we've talked about multiple times. This is Shepard Perry and his famous Obey icon. Uh, on the right-hand side, I wanted to show you this, this Obey star image. Uh, of the face within the star. And this is on a print. And then on the left-hand side, you can see that same image, but now actually applied in the streets onto a surface, onto one of those signs that tell you when you can walk or not walk across a street. Uh, Shepard has a quote that I'll, I'll, I'll repeat here. The art of stickers isn't just about what is on them, but also how they are integrated into the environment. The most common placement is poles and crosswalk boxes at eye level. These are the fastest places to be clean. So the artwork is ephemeral. So sometimes climbing is a, you know, a couple feet or jumping to you know, apply your sticker or crawling through weeds to get to a certain sign is necessary to have your stickers and to have your artwork remain longer on the streets to have more people look at them. Uh, Shepard said, I got, stick I got sick of my stickers being peeled off like the postal stickers that are, that are paper-based and a little bit easier to remove. Uh, so that's when they started to uh, use the kind of vinyl labels that we've talked about in our other classes. Some of those, um, the, the destructible vinyl, that eggshell sticker, so they're harder to take off. Uh, you can buy those blank or you can print onto them, and that's what he has used to make sure that his stickers last a little bit longer when they're applied in the streets. Um, this is, once again, what we were talking about earlier in the definitions. This would be considered a sticker bond. Uh, you know, this you can see over here is the uh, very small amount of a visible street sign on the top left uh, with that reflective, you know, information. And then these artists have 
literally covered the entire rest of the surface in their printed stickers. Uh, there might be a couple that are hand drawn, but I, I think the majority of these are, are, are printed. Um, this is by Hale, Haler and the AL at large crew. Um, and instead of just putting up uh, his stickers, uh, he put up other people's stickers as well. So that HA is also his uh, graffiti letter uh, throw. There's stickers from friends and crewmates like MQ or Soup uh, that you can see around in this image. Uh, poke from the DMS crew as well over here. And then also stickers that are uh, just for the crew itself. Uh, these, these four on the left hand side that are pretty large that look like arrows are for the seventh letter crew. So you can see, uh, you know, a sticker gets put up often one time. Other sticker artists come and fill out the rest. But in this case, uh, this artist put up tons and tons of their own stickers, their crew stickers, and stickers for friends. Uh, so once again, that's something that I really love about stickers and trading stickers and, and sending them to other people is that, you know, I may never visit San Francisco, but if I send my stickers to a street artist or a friend who is there, they can put my stickers up, send me pictures, and then it's like I was there. My artwork is now on the streets in an area or in a place or a city that I've never even been to. So it's really interesting. You can also trade in stickers uh, almost like baseball cards and collect uh, the artwork of other uh, writers and artists. Uh, it's a pretty fun thing to do. Uh, again, talking about repetition, this is what we're fo focusing on today. You can see four images identically drawn uh, onto these labels uh, by the artist Katsu. This is another artist that we've gone over. Uh, that skull image just repeated over and over and over again. If you see it once, you'll see it again, and you'll recognize it. Uh, I see a comment coming in. I think I've seen stuff like that with someone named Gare Boyer. Yes, so Gare and boy are two different artists uh, in the same crew, so they're friends, they write together, uh, and they often use printed stickers, very legible, they are eggshells, so they're harder to remove, and they put them, you know, everywhere. Um, they have some very, very stylized stickers as well that are a little bit more uh, hard to read or a little bit uh, more colorful, but the ones that you'll see in Washington, D.C., in the DMV area mostly, are those black and white Gare Voyeur stickers. There's actually been a couple, uh, um, like, Reddit posts, and I think there was a Washington post uh, like, like op-ed with me, like, who are this? You know, is it an uh, advertisement? Is it a company? What is it? And it's graffiti writers and street artists who are putting their names out there as much as possible. That's a great question. Uh, and I love that you, you've seen it, right? Because you see it once, that means you'll see it again, and you start to recognize the, the artists who are active in your community. Uh, if you're in an urban environment, if you're in a city, you know, walk down any street and keep your eyes out. Like Shepard was saying, at eye-level places that you think people could appear uh, there, there are work to, uh, backs of uh, street signs, uh, mailboxes, electrical boxes, other places, you'll essentially be getting a free walking art tour in your neighborhood of all these different street artists and graffiti writers. Uh, something that happened this year over COVID, while most people were stuck inside their homes, their apartments, and maybe not physically getting out onto the streets, was the Thousand Slaps Challenge that an artist named Night Owl started, I believe, on Instagram. Uh, Night Owl is based in Oakland, California, and uses these uh, awesome characters that represent a very stylized owl uh, to do, you know, on your right-hand side, you can see large spray-painted murals, uh, also small stickers, like on the left-hand side. Uh, you really name it, uh, avid traveler. Uh, I've seen, uh, you know, Night Owl stickers here in New York, um, they have stickers in Paris, all over the San Francisco Bay area, um, and you can re really recognize them instantly. Once again, we're talking about that repetition, right? Because if you see a stylized owl with that beak and those eyes, uh, you'll know that it's a night owl. Uh, I see in the comment, Andy was saying, after this class, you know, walking around definitely started to notice more stickers around in your environment. Uh, I think it's a great way to, you know, see, you know, who is actively artistic in public in your neighborhood. I love walking around and taking pictures of stickers. I'll throw a podcast on or call my grandma or my mom and I'll go for a walk and I'll just take pictures of all the things that I see. So that, that's great. I'm glad that you're, you're doing that. Um, go, going to the next slide. Um, wanted to, to pause and really take some time on this. So Night Owl can do those stylized owl faces, right? Or really sitting down and taking the time to draw on, on labels. You can see in this middle uh, picture, there's actually three pictures that I stacked together to show you uh, the differences. Um, but this in the middle with those blue and uh, you know feathers and the yellow eyes, 
are the final finished products on the stickers. And you can see the inspiration for the sketch here uh, is that owl. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, you can see the first initial lines done in Sharpie uh, on all of these stickers. Each one is handmade. I think that's so incredible and authentic and original. Um, a lot of graffiti writers have used or utilized printed stickers because it's faster, right? You can order them in bulk. You can make one design and mass produce them and put them up. Uh, but I think there's something extremely important about the hand of the artist on stickers. That's not to disregard the work that those artists are putting in on the streets of putting their artwork out there, whether it's a silk screen wheat paste that they're putting or a stencil that's you know spray painted thousands of times on the streets or a sticker that's printed and you know stuck all over. There's still value in that type of artwork, obviously. But personally, I love seeing a hand-drawn sticker. I love seeing and knowing that the artist took that, that time to draw a one-of-a-kind object, a one-of-a-kind art piece, and then got rid of it and put it in the streets and kind of gave it away to the public to view, whether that's uh, people that are passing by, other street artists who are interested in seeing their work, whatever that might be. So I wanted to show you uh, on the left, that's that initial sketch done in Sharpie. Uh, again, thinking about the, the tools that we're using as we're making our stickers, Sharpies are very good. They're permanent markers. You know what you're buying <laughs> when you get them. And they usually have that bullet pointed tip so your, your lines are relatively uniform uh, as you use it. Uh, you can see the multiple owls here. The next step is on the right hand side and you see a couple of markers down here for di different colors. Uh, one is yellow, so the artist is, uh, you know, now coloring in the eyes. You know, shading. You can see some yellows and oranges going on. You can especially see this in the bottom right. Uh, they're they're you know adding color to the nose. And then the final product here is they're really filling out the rest. They're adding those blues and the grays, kind of stylized that, that owl face from the sketch on the, you know, the side to now these stickers that will be placed in the streets. Um, so you can actually go to Night Owl's Instagram. If you look them up on Instagram, you can see some examples of their work and how they've created over a thousand custom hand-drawn stickers this year that then go into sticker packs that are sold online. You can actually buy some of these from the artist, or you can walk around Oakland specifically and find them all over the streets. Um, on the right is a, yeah, a sticker. Uh, you can see it's been, you know, peeled, it looks like. Uh, this was spray painted and then, uh, you know, adhere to the wall, it looks like, um, on, on maybe some vinyl. Uh, you see people try to rip it along the bottom and it's kind of deteriorated, so it's staying up there a lot longer. And on the le left-hand side over here, you can see all of these other labels. Each one is custom drawn. Uh, it's that same logo, that same, uh, uh, you know, character different backgrounds, different things written on the sides, different tags. Uh, and these are actually DHL labels. So again, thanks to uh, uh, mail and, and package shipping companies and organizations like the US Postal Service, um, uh, the thermal labels from DHL and from FedEx. And then these are actually uh, uh, mail labels from DHL that are now repurposed by the artist uh, as canvases. You can see there's a couple of coffee on the right hand side it's like sit down for your cup of coffee knock out 20 stickers then go to work i think that's fantastic um sometimes i'll you know, throw you know when i'm actually making stickers or drawing in my sketchbook you know, i'll throw a movie on i'll throw a tv show on and i'll have that going on in the background while i'm just drawing and drawing and drawing so it's kind of cool to see an insight into the uh, regular day of the artist here um let's go to the next so that thousand slaps challenge you can't really see this image that well other than it just looks like repetition, right? So other artists took that challenge on Instagram and they also did the same thing. Uh, they made, or they tried to make in many cases, you know, a thousand hand done individual stickers. Um, on the left hand side, this is an artist uh, in New York called uh, City Kitty. Love their work. They collaborate with a lot of different artists, um, including uh, I believe Lounge Box is another one here in New York. A lot of wheat paste, a lot of stickers. Um, they may look completely identical, and I believe that there's either the artist is either using a stamp or actually printing the black outline of the image onto these stickers, and then it's using colored pencils and markers to individually color, almost like a coloring book, um, 
each one of these stickers add little bits of uh, nuance or, or distinction or definitions on different stickers. They actually are all hand drawn and completely different from one another. Um, and these are on labels that are, you know, classic, I would say. Uh, they're a version of those 228 USPS labels uh, that I think are almost 10 years old now. So it's pretty cool that they're using older vintage labels. Um, on the right hand side, you can't entirely see it because the image is going down the table. Um, but this is an artist named Dio who draws this cool uh, dog character. Uh, it's funny that I have a cat artist and a dog artist on one slide. I just noticed that. Um, but the dog character kind of has these, these eyes that come down. You can see, if you zoom in, uh, some of these are throws. So it's bubble letter uh, you know, of the D-I-O on the stickers. Uh, if you look in the middle of this first column, uh, this pink label here where my, my cursor is, that is a dog, pink with green eyes. Uh, the next label is a pink label spelling out Dio. Then you've got a blue label for that throw, uh, you know, or that fill uh, with the same Dio, D-I-O lettering. Uh, then you've got a blue dog here in the middle with those orange eyes, if you can kind of see that. And then a sticker that has three tags on it. So this is kind of a cool picture. You can see all of these are stickers, but you have a character, a throw, and tags on different ones. So once again, that artist hand drawing all these labels uh, and, and you know, taking up that challenge of creating a thousand of them and either trading them or putting them out on the streets or you know, at some point distributing them and getting them out there uh, for uh, application in the public. Um, there is an artist that I want to show next. These are not going to technically be stickers, but this is one of my favorite street artists and one that I have not talked about, I believe, in this class yet. Uh, and for all of you in the DMV area, or if you're in Philadelphia, if you're in New York, you may have seen this artist before. So uh, this is an artist named Stickman. I would love if anybody in the chat will say, I've seen that before. Maybe you haven't. Uh, it's an extremely mysterious artist who's been doing uh, these, these stick figures uh, for over, gosh, maybe 30 years at this point. Um, and and uh, uh, these are technically adhesive. So these uh, images that you're seeing on the screen, if you ever see the uh, sidewalk uh, things that say like stop or return, uh, that, that almost asphalt uh, paint that is on there. Um, this artist essentially makes giant stickers using that same material, places them on the streets, cars run over them, and actually start to push that sticker that's made out of that asphalt material, uh, that, that, uh, that really heavy duty industrial like ground paint into the pavement, and then it actually keeps it there for a long time. Um, so Stickman, is, uh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, Stickman uh, has kind of played this game in different cities of like hide and seek with the character. So you would be walking across a crosswalk and there's one. Or you look in the back of a sign and, it, and adhere to the sign is uh, Stickman actually made out of sticks or found material and then pasted on the back, back with glue. Um, so, uh, you know, I wanted to show this artist, you know, he hides these little characters almost in plain sight. Uh, uh, you know, thinking about that um, gorilla art that um, we were talking about earlier, or graffiti art and street art, it's kind of blending those with a sense of humor, uh, a sense of, uh, you know, finding, you know, where the street art really meets real life. Uh, these are tangible, physical things that you can pick up uh, sometimes, or you can walk across them in these cases that you're looking at. Um, if you're in uh, DC and you're walking on the National Mall, there's actually a few of these on the crosswalks. Uh, I think there's one near the Hirschhorn. Uh, there's one near, um, and, and once again, sometimes they disappear, sometimes they get run over, sometimes they go away, sometimes they get removed. But if you're on a trip to the National Mall and you're looking at some museums, you know, keep an eye out for some of the stickmen. Yeah, you might see them around. Um, here is a sticker, once again, uh, that same image of that stick character. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit different. Sometimes it's you know, taller or shorter, has bigger eyes or bigger head, whatever that might be. Um, but the inspiration for this, and I think this is really cool, because once again, as you're finding your style, as you're finding the character that you want to draw, as you're finding your inspiration, it can really come from anywhere. So uh, in about, I think it was 1990, maybe 1989, this artist was at a flea market, and they came across this object. It was almost two feet tall. It was a plaster mold of what looked like a humanoid figure. And it was a stick man. So this artist brought this home, and that has inspired him now to create 
tens of thousands of reproductions of that character almost making it his own, giving a life to this object that was going to be, you know, essentially discarded and making this whole world of art around it. Um, I think it's really incredible. I think it's amazing. Um, and I really like this sticker because it's uh, got like almost like a comic book look behind it and then a stencil over it. So you're left with that negative image of the stick man. And then it's, uh, you know, pasted in the street for people to see. Uh, here's an example on the left-hand side of one of those physical stick men that you can touch. It's tactile and it's been pasted as if it was a sticker onto the streets. Uh, you can see the artist literally broke sticks and put them together and glued them to make that image and then put glue on the back the same way you'd use an adhesive label and place it in the street. Uh, on the right-hand side, again, one of those postal labels readily available uh, for artists to repurpose as a canvas, and it's that same exact image. So if you see the one on the left, you know it's a stick man. If you see the one on the right, you know it's a stick man. And, uh, I don't think that the artist really uses or, or writes their name next to their pieces any longer. I think in the beginning uh, they may have. Um, but, you know, I, the first stick man was installed in, I think, 1992 in Manhattan. Um, and I'm looking at the comments. It's cool that he was inspired to make the stick man just one random day. Uh, you know, seeing that object, and now it's so popular. Yeah, so this artist has been in uh, you know, multiple gallery shows. You can go online, and sometimes uh, different galleries are actually selling their work, physical sculptures, paintings, stickers, you name it. I'm lucky enough to have uh, one or two pieces of Stickman in my collection, actually, uh, which I did not get out for this presentation, but I'm very happy to have. Um, and, and, and to your point, of it's cool that they were inspired by that thing that they saw, right? So I have a quote here from Stickman. My original concept was that the sticks had escaped the piece of plaster and moved out into the world, and now they're all wandering around as if a unified force, able to take various shapes and travel wherever they want to go. And I love that, right? The artist has created this character, given it life, and it's now out there for other people to interact with and see and take down if they want and keep in their collections or buy a piece from a gallery and, you know, patron of the artist who you've seen all their public work and now you can buy a piece of theirs from a, you know, an institution or gallery or online. Um, I don't believe that the Stickman has an Instagram account, but I do think they have a Flickr account, which is an uh, older uh, image sharing platform that is online, I think owned by Yahoo. So check them out, look up Stickman without the C. Um, so it's stick with a K, man, all one word. Um, not to be confused with another artist that goes by Stick that also does stick figure uh, street art. Um, but but Stickman is one of my favorites. And lastly, talking about Stickman, wanted to show this image of just the various stickers that have been applied um, on the streets by this artist. Some of these are those asphalt compression pieces that we were talking about. Some are stickers that are on the back of street signs or the side of an electrical box or you know, the side of a door or whatever that might be. And you can see it's all the same character. The feet are out. Yes, exactly, Andy, a whole Stickman army. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and now I hope that you keep your eyes out for this awesome little character in your, in your cities if you're uh, in an urban environment. If you're in the DC area, if you're in Philly, I know there's a lot there. There are plenty in New York. Uh, there's actually one in Rockefeller Center. I took a picture of it right in the crosswalk uh, facing the, um, the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree a few years ago. So I hope it's still there. Uh, these are temporary, they're ephemeral. If it's a sticker, it can be peeled down. If it's one of those asphalt compression pieces, it can be ran over, or taken away by the city. Um, but keep your eyes out. This is, once again, the point of today's lesson, that repetition is key. Building your character, giving a life of its own, um, you know, customizing it, different colors, different shapes, different sizes, different uh, you know, uh, movements. I like this one has its arm up. This one is skinnier. This one has a bigger head. This one uh, on the right-hand side, second from the right on the bottom, is kind of like walking towards you in a very exaggerated way. Uh, just wanted to show you these. One of my favorite street artists, uh, I'm really inspired by the work that they've done for almost three decades now. And it proves that, uh, you know, it can be a hobby, it can be a career, it can be something that you do on the side. Street art is so many things to so many different people. And for you, this might be a career path that goes towards gallery work and fine art. Uh, it could be just, you know, you putting street art out there in your community. It could be just an appreciation of street art. You're not actually making your own, but you're 
you know, watching it and you're watching the artists come up and, and create artwork in your neighborhood, whatever, whatever that might be. So again, street art belongs on the streets. I'm going to encourage all of you, go out in your neighborhoods. Uh, thank you for taking this class, obviously, and being so interested in this topic. Uh, and if you want to create art and put it out there, whether it's a poem on a sticker that you wrote or a wheat paste or a sticker that you draw and you just write, write your initials or you create a character and you want to give it a life of its own and put it out there, uh, repetition will make that message more familiar. People will recognize it. Uh, they will associate the art with the artist. And, uh, you know, it's easy to mass produce posters and uh, wheat paste or stickers, whatever that might be. But you can really take your time and make your art as nuanced or complicated or not as you want it to be. You have the tools. You have some instruction from me over these four sessions. Uh, you can get supplies, whether it's buying stickers online. Uh, uh, I, I recently purchased, for example, this 100 pack of Hello, My Name is stickers. Uh, these are C-line stickers. They're relatively small compared to some of the others. But I love the, the size, the shape. The hello, my name is, and you can put your, your graffiti name, your tag name. They're slightly smaller than those US Postal Service labels, so more of them can be applied to smaller spaces. Uh, uh, you know, whatever it might be, you can also get those postal labels, like we were saying, but I don't recommend necessarily doing that. Um, but at this point, I did want to open it up slightly and just ask, as I start to set up the, the camera, we go into the doing part of today, what from this course has really resonated with you? Will you be inspired to create art? Are there any artists that we've talked about that um, really stand out or inspire you? And you're like, wow, I never knew that. Or wow, that one graffiti artist, that street artist, you know, I'm going to look out for them. Or they really had a distinct style that I resonated with. Um, so take 10 seconds now, maybe to put that in the chat. I'm going to have a sip of water because I've been talking a lot. And then we'll go into the doing portion of today's lesson. Again, I want to thank all of you so much for joining me over these past four weeks. I'm excited to continue, obviously, for the next uh, uh, 40 minutes, 30 minutes, um, but uh, yeah, excuse me, <laughs> next few minutes. Uh, and, and again, uh, you know, Words Beats Life is a resource for you to continue your education, whether that's watching some of these recorded lessons, attending future classes, uh, or coming to uh, paint jams, or coming to live events. Um, uh, you can see on the bottom, uh, I've got the ticker going. I'm not going to turn this into with like an end. PR, uh, pledge drive, asking for money or, or support, but it's really important for you as artists to not only support each other, but to support these programs and uh, to attend these classes. You know, I think uh, each one, teach one is one of the mottos that I've heard often said. Um, I was fortunate enough to learn from a few older street artists and graffiti artists, uh, but I also had the internet and, and, you know, websites at my disposal to find inspiration. But these classes are so unique, and I really encourage all of you to continue your education and create art Art, create street art, put your artwork out there for others to see. Um, all right, so now I will show you uh, something that I actually did for the first time last night. I've never done this before. I know another uh, art class here at Roots Beats and Life um, did this over the summer, um, and I was inspired by that. Um, and that is creating a vinyl block uh, stamp. So this is a linoleum block. And actually, I'll, I'll pivot really quickly, perfect, to show. Uh, uh, these side by sides. Um, so vanilla blocks, uh, they're uh, you know often shaped like this, um, and they can come. Oftentimes, you can buy this at an art supply store with specialized tools that let you carve into the block. Now, this is essentially a stamp, so you can apply ink or acrylic or specialized uh, material to it, and then you can mass produce the image that you've either carved into the block, uh, either the negative or the positive space, depending on if you took away uh, the, you know, uh, where the ink will be or if you added more room. Um, I'm looking at, at a comment here. I love Sick Man and those bug robots. Such a cool idea to create a character or an army to put them all over, just opposed to putting your name out there. Nothing, not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. And also, um, people who are outside of the street art and graffiti communities might be more receptive to seeing an image than a tag. That's not to say that one is better than the other but it also might be more identifiable, right? So you see the stick man, even though it doesn't say stick man on it, you know that it's a stick man. If you see a tag, you have to decipher the tag. Maybe it's hard to read. Maybe it looks like the 30 other tags from other artists that are also 
uh, you know, active in your neighborhood. So it kind of could become part of that visual noise. Um, again, thinking about um, ad busting and you're using advertising techniques in your art. Uh, you know, you see a McDonald's M, you know it's McDonald's. You see a Subway logo, you see it, you know, you know it's a Subway um, without having to read it. You see a stick man, you know it's a stick man. If you see a tag, you might not be sure who was the artist that put that there. So oh, I do agree with you. Um, creating like a little army of your characters is a fun way to get your artwork out there. It's recognizable. Um, and, and back to the Lido block, right? One way to do that, like that City Kitty series of stickers that I was showing, is to create an outline of the image, print onto the stickers, and then customize. So that's what I'll actually show you uh, today. I I don't have all of the supplies that are usually used with line of block printing. Uh, you can have like a roller and specialized ink and acrylic that they recommend using. Uh, but once again, street art class, graffiti, DIY, aesthetic. I'm going to show you how I did this last night at 1 a.m. when I was thinking about this lesson uh, and, and how I could actually put myself out of my comfort zone and try something new. So I carved. Uh, and remember, whatever you do on here will be reverse imaged onto the surface. Uh, but I carved. WBL in kind of a very, very rudimentary, simple uh, graffiti font into this block. Now, how I did that was I took a Sharpie and I outlined WBL directly onto here. And then I took this tool that has this kind of scoop, shovel, you know, metal blade. And I carved away anywhere where I did not want the ink to go. So it only ink onto the letters and then that would be applied to the surface. So I can um, switch over to the camera view uh, on the paper, and I'll show you what this looks like if you carve. So I'll actually just flip this over, and I'll just go really close, and I'll show you that you can see a little bit, you see the, the flakes kind of coming away. Um, I'm making just you know lines here, but you can see it kind of take away from the surface. So it's slightly tedious, but you can be as, oh, there we go. So you can see the lines here. Um, and I'm, I'm carving away very slowly. So you can see the flakes coming off. So you do that enough. And you're going, you're making those, uh, you know, those indentations. And then you're left with your stamp. So what I'm going to do is, and again, this is rudimentary. It is brutal. I'm sure line of block artists are cursing my name and they're like, why are you teaching bad techniques? But we're talking about DIY, we're talking about graffiti, we're talking about doing it yourself. So I've got a paint marker here. Uh, how long did this take? Um, I put a podcast on, I did the outline, and once again, this is a very simple stamp. It took about an hour to make. Um, but if you think about it, the amount of time now I'll be able to reproduce, mass produce stickers uh, that all look the same is worth, it, to me at least, uh, for this. Uh, uh, exercise. So I'm going to take this paint marker. Uh, it's a chisel tipped paint marker, and I'll switch over to this view so you can see what I'm about to do. Uh, I've got this inked and ready, and I'm going to apply the paint onto the stamp part. So anywhere where I want ink to be. I'm sure other artists are like, what are you doing? But this is what we're going to do in our lesson today. So Bob Ross and get happy little accidents, right? Um, so I've got the ink where I want it to be. I'm going to flip this around, and I'm going to press it onto the sticker. And I'll put a little bit of pressure on that. I will actually cap the marker and roll it over this to make sure it's getting the ink onto there as if it's a big stamp, right? And now I'm going to peel this away. We're going to see what it looks like. All right. So you've got WBL right there. Now, you can see that there's some uh, you know, paint that come off. It kind of looks like it applied evenly in some areas and not others. I kind of like that. It kind of looks like a wall. It kind of looks like concrete. So instead of letting this dry as I normally would, since we've only got uh, about 15 minutes left together, I'm going to go right into how I would then customize this and make it uh, a brand new custom label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another marker. Uh, this is just an ink marker that I've got lying around. Uh, contrasting color to what we have here. And I'm going to outline the letters 
And you can see that green, that kind of like toxic neon looking green uh, really contrasts with the, uh, the good purpley pink color that we have here. So I'm gonna do this wherever I want this color to be. I'm gonna go around the rest of the W here. I'll kind of color it in here, even though I know a lot of this is gonna get uh, covered in my outline. All right, and I'll finish off over here. Maybe I'll add some bubbles off to the side like that. Apologies for being a righty. I realize that I'm uh, <laughs> covering some of the screen. Uh, but all right, so now we've got the colors down. And now I will take a thicker black acrylic marker. Uh, this is an Uni Pasca. Uh, and it's bullet shaped, so all my lines are going to be a uniform shape when I do this outline. And I'll start with the W. Um, so let's see. And it's really going to make that distinction between the different colors. Um, outlining your letters always is the final part here. You can see how distinct that is now. Um, and once again, this might not be the prettiest, or it might not be the cleanest, but it's our stamp. It's our sticker. Uh, I'm just going to do it the way we're going to do it on this on this glass. I think it looks cool. And I'll show you uh, how I'm going to do something else in a second as well. So once again, just outlining here, kind of a wavy W arm over here. I'll bring this up. All right, so now you've got your sticker, at least part of it. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of 3D here. Now, if I wanted to do uh, this, uh, I kind of go on like a 45 degree angle off of any line where um, this letter would be three dimensional. So I'm going to go this way and then color that in ever so slightly. I'm going to go this way just to give these letters a little bit of volume on the sticker. And anywhere where it's gone on over my outline, I'll just go again. Um, but it just adds a little bit of heft to these letters. Um, and again, you know, it's on a sticker. So I'm watching TV, presenting a class. So I could take all the time in the world uh, to really get this as right as I want it to be. Um, let's see. Over here on that outline. Yep. At the bottom of the B. And the L over here. There you go. So you've got your sticker. Um, that looks kind of like a concrete look over here. I, I love how the ink isn't uni like universally distributed across the sticker, actually. It looks kind of like weathered. So since that kind of looks like a concrete, I'm actually going to take another more fine-lined paint marker that I have here. Um, I'll make sure the ink is coming out. Uh, just so you can see the difference between this marker and the marker that I just used, this is the size of the line that this marker or this paint pen will produce. And the one that I just used to outline has a, a line that is that big. So they are, you know, very similar, but just ever so slightly different. So what I'll do here is add a couple of cracks because it kind of looks like concrete or like it's made out of stone. So I'll do that. Maybe add one down here, kind of like it's breaking off. Maybe I'll add a crack over here. And then I'll add, you know, that could be the end. You know, that, that could be the end. I love that, super legit. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, uh, and it just shows, right? So now I've got that stamp. I can mass produce these. I can customize them however I want. Um, I'm going to use one other paint marker to add some highlights, um, you know, similar color to the pink that's on there, but this red is just ever so slightly different. And now in the span of, you know, a couple minutes here on this, this video, I've created a sticker that, you know, looks pretty good. And I'll do some stuff up here and you can see it's just ever so slight on there, but it just gives it a little bit more color. 
Uh, you could also use, you know, highlights, right? White, silver, whatever. Um, and then I've got all this other space, you know, if I wanted to use that. Or what you could do too is you could cut it out, right? So let me um, uh, do the rest of that outline because I went over it a little bit with the 3D. So I'm going to do that kind of like force field bubble look around my sticker. And then if I wanted to, which I think I might, uh, just because we have a little bit of time, just almost make it like a die cut. So let me, um, you know, cut this out, and I'll put this on a, a dark surface so you can really see. What I'm doing now is I'm just cutting around uh, where I made that force field or that uh, outline color. Um, make sure to get some of the bubbles in there. Maybe this is like ASMR, right? Those videos where you watch and uh, you can hear the cutting in the background. <laughs> um, but you know, once again, just within you know, a few minutes or so, now we've got this sticker that we can put on any. Yeah, you, know, you can put this on your notebook. You can put this on your laptop. I'll move this away so you can see it on a background. But you know, here it is on its own, right? So you got this cool WBL sticker, and if I wanted to, you know, I can use that stamp again just to uh, mass produce this image onto any amount of stickers that I want. Uh, you can actually, what I did last time uh, today, uh, I put the sticker down, I put the stamp on top of it. But what you could do instead is leave the stamp here, you know, apply, uh, you know, this again, you know, and you can see how quickly you could just mass produce your stickers. and. Imagine, you know, you put your character on here, right? Just the outline of your character. Then you can color it different colors. You can do different things. Uh, last time I had the sticker on the bottom and I pressed this on top. This time I'll just put the sticker on top, right? I'll just press it down. Maybe roll it out with that marker again, hoping that all the ink will take. You know, do this a few times. And peel it away. There you go. It's the same thing, right? I could use a different color another time. Uh, let's take another paint marker and add some blue. And then go over that and add maybe a little bit of pink. Maybe get a cool effect with different colors. Take another sticker and apply, roll that over with the marker. Usually you would use more legitimate tools, but hey, we work, we got, work with these stickers that we get for free <laughs> and work with the tools we've got. And then peel this away and see how this looks. All right, so it worked a little bit actually. And then if I outline, I'll just quickly outline these two. I know we're running out of time, but just to show you the differences between the two stickers, is right. Um, let's see. I'll just do the WB. Eh, well, we'll see. Now, on these, I did very straight lines, right? Very legible lines. I know in one of the last classes, we did that, like, kind of uh, squiggly, like, um, drippy lines. So even now I could do that too, right? I could kind of do like, and I actually like that some of the white came through the sticker. Um, yeah, because then if I do things like this, it doesn't look like there were any mistakes. It was all intentional, right? So I kind of do, maybe throw a bubble up top of here. Um, something like this. Maybe connect those two together. Do some of this, and then have the L come out over here. You can see the, the tail of the L. And if I do the 3D on this, it'll be a little bit more legible. So let's do that, that really quickly. And remember, this is the same exact stamp that we had before, but now even just outlining it in a different way, you know, less straight. 
uh, letters and more and less uniform lines and kind of giving it this like uh, drippy appearance. It totally customizes how that stamp was then used, even though it's the same image. So again, and you're looking at the same base printing. Yes, there we go. And then uh, to, to differentiate the background, I'll just quickly, quickly use another marker. And now it looks like that white where the ink didn't come through is actually part of the color fill for the letters, which I really like uh, on this one. So I'm just going to very quickly, you know, outline uh, here. And then you'll see uh, how this looks compared to the other ones. Let's see. Put the color into here. And we're good. So there is your new sticker um, compared to the first one. Again, same image, totally different outlines. Uh, similar colors, and if I cut this one out away from the white, you would also see it would you know, look more like that, or maybe I you know, do this red throughout the rest of the sticker to, um, to highlight the colors of the letters. Um, so I'll just very quickly do that, just to get away from the white of the sticker where the ink didn't take. But now it looks like that was intentional, and that that white was part of the letters. So again, you got two very similar stickers uh, showcasing the different styles. Um, I know you only have. Yep. Oh, glad you like that. Okay. I know we've got about three minutes left in this um, this broadcast. I do want to mention again we're talking about making use with what we have, uh, and one of the ways to make your own stamp if you don't have access to this line of block material at a local store is to actually use a potato. And if it might sound silly, but you can take a raw potato, and I've got a cutting board here and a knife, and you can literally cut it in half or cut it in your shape. And then you can use your marker or whatever it is to make a design on here. Use a knife or a, you know, a, a scalpel, or if you do have one of these tools, to cut around it like that. And whatever the image is left, now you've got the hand done stamp. So you can actually do that. Um, for our purposes, I'll extremely quickly uh, do this. I'll take my marker and I'll take the potato and I'll put ink all over this so it's not just that yellow. So now I see where this is, right? I see where the ink is going to apply to. And I'll take my, um, my tool here and I'll carve a very quick M into it. Uh, let's go to the end uh, camera and then I will show you uh, how quickly I'm going to do this. And we've only got couple of minutes left, uh, um, but you know, you can carve out, let's say, a shape. Um, and then what you're left with, once you get all the little potato bits there, is a stamp. So for this one, the ink will go where uh, I didn't carve, so it's going to be the majority of this outline, but imagine you outline your character, you do something like that, um, and you have this, and then you take your stamp, and you place it on something, and you're left with an image of whatever's left over. So not the best one ever, because I'm doing it with like two minutes left in this lesson, but I did want to show you that. So you do have supplies probably in your home or uh, you know, at your local grocery store that you can use. Once again, street art is all about doing this, it's however you want to make it. Make it you know, stickers, doing your poetry on stickers, having a character, whatever it might be. Uh, making a stamp if you want to, whether it's a potato stamp or a line of block stamp. So again, thank you everybody for joining. I hope this was an informative lesson. Um, thank you again for joining. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you're inspired to go out and make stickers or take, take in street art or take pictures or whatever that might be. I uh, can't thank you enough. If you have any questions for me or for Worth Beats in Life, you know where to find
find us. The information is always down below on these calls that you find us online or at live events, hopefully sometime soon. Thanks, everybody. My name is Federico. I go by Mas Bas. I am a, an artist. So I moved to New York in 2006, and that's really when I started getting into the gra graffiti like, world. And I worked at this graffiti gallery, I met a bunch of graffiti artists, and I was doing graffiti on clothes. And before that, I was selling t-shirts in the street. And, um, and just starting to do this graffiti on clothes, it really kind of gave me more into the graffiti scene, of course, and I started going out and painting. Um, with a bunch of homies up there in New York. When I came here, uh, uh, I had just been in Brazil and, um, and I started kind of playing around with a different kind of uh, typography, um, not just using graffiti letters. I took like, a, like um, inspiration from like Mayan and indigenous cultures and like uh, hieroglyphics and started kind of like coming up with just kind of like a different kind of font structure of a letter that kind of looked kind of like, uh, it was like kind of pizza sal, like the Brazilian graffiti, kind of was like a pizza sal, but then it's kind of like straight kind of font. So instead of doing graffiti, I kind of like, I was like, let me just try to do something different. So I started using like brushes and rollers to like do these kind of like indigenous letter styles. And then, um, and then from that, I was kind of like, can I do something with my letter style? But like, instead, like, can I tell a story, like a visual story through illustration? But I'm not trying to paint like a portrait. I'm not really trying to paint anything like really realistic. I was like, I've kind of like, I've dabbled in that area, but I was like, why don't I take this kind of Mayan and Incan indigenous style and kind of bring it to life in throughout, through me, you know? And put that up on the wall. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> I think to get down to the bottom of it, like what do I think about public art? I feel like public art is uh, art that is free for the community, you know? Art that you don't have to get on a bus and go or on airplane or anywhere. You, you, your art is there in your community. And, and there you're able to interact with your community as you're painting. The community can talk with you as you're painting. You're not just some artist that gets flown in from who knows where, comes and paints a piece like overnight and just bounces and just like gets a fat paint check and just like leaves and paints over some mural that like uh, was very important. Like that is the opposite of what like what real uh, community community art is. That's the opposite, you know. I think it's about interacting with your community, making artwork. Uh, that reflects the community, being present there, like talking to the community as you're making the artwork. Um, that's the most important. And, and bottom line, it, it's free. It's free, and you're making something that the that the community will will uh, that they will appreciate. And like I'm talking about, like little kids, like little baby in a stroller, they look up at it and be like, "Yo, what's going on?" Or like even grandma, grandma walking by, like, "Wow, thank you, I like that." You know, making something that's like accessible for everybody and appreciated by everybody. So painting the train was this is the first paint train I think I've ever painted. Um, from the big plastic trains. Kind of brought me back to the roots and creating something uh, for WBL. Uh, it was really cool. It's just like being here and sharing. It's just like, this is a more of like a community project. So it's nice to kind of like see friendly faces again. And um, you know, looking forward to like doing, seeing what's next and where I can see my piece and like, um, uh, yeah, excited to see it online or in a gallery.